Hi, it's Hazel, and welcome to my channel. I uh, have another thrift haul video for you, and I uh, would just like to say that if you are enjoying the content, I would appreciate it if you would subscribe and uh, give me a thumbs up and comment. I uh, I don't get that many comments, to be honest. So I am putting my heart into replying and uh, really enjoying that whole process because I'm very grateful for the people who do comment. So, I mean, you guys know who you are. And I, uh, yeah, it almost feels like having a pen pal in a sense. I do wish that people would identify where they're from you know, whether it's a state or a country or a city, um, it just helps, you know, me know where where people are. Quite often when people comment from Australia or a place like that, they'll say so. But um, yeah, it's just a curiosity thing. Anyway, I will get right to it because I know your time is precious. Speaking of precious... Is this not the cutest little tin you've ever seen? It came from Purdy's Chocolates. Uh, empty, unfortunately. <laughs> but just lovely. It's fairly shallow, but that's okay. Uh, sometimes we just need something like that uh, for a particular thing that we want to store. Now, what I'm kind of learning about myself, and I don't know if you caught the Marguerite Miller video about uh, sort of decluttering, and she had a link to, I think the website is clutterbug.com, and um, I, will, I will link that below, both the Marguerite Miller thing and the clutterbug. Now, I took the... Um, the survey or the took the quiz apparently the premise is that that uh, clutter bug be you know bug bug so her four categories are insects um i'm apparently a butterfly which means um ca uh, am I surprised? Are you surprised that it's the opposite of what of what most people are? So, hey, story of my life. Swimming upstream. Anyway, I haven't read all the material or watched all the other videos, but apparently um, what I have heard or seen already from her website, apparently it's a, a rabbit hole, you caution. <laughs> Do not disappear for hours. But apparently, I'm one of those people that needs to have my stuff visible. Otherwise, I forget I have it. And it also needs to be really easy. So she advocates the use of hooks and open containers and so on. And I'm thinking, you know, that's that's partially right. I do have those photo storage boxes. And all of them are sitting inside their covers, which means that I can just throw something into there without um, having to, you know, find the cover, take the cover up. You know, it sounds ridiculous, I know, but every little bit helps. And anyway, I'm off on a tangent. Uh, if you want to know more about it, check out the links in the description box, box below. So this tin you know it is cute enough in itself it's not branded in any way so who knows maybe this just becomes a decorative item because if i put something in a box and don't have it labeled it's easy to forget that i what i put in there but enough about that i visited <laughs> in canada our uh deadline for filing income tax is April 30th, um, May, who knows, we have a public service strike uh, right now. And um, anyway, I was in a neighboring community dropping off our paperwork for the accountant. And so I did some, some checking out of some secondhand places there. This is, of 
course, I've got to measure it. Oh, this is 12 by 6. So, like half a 12 by 12. I haven't seen this before. I don't know. Did somebody... I don't know if it was cut by somebody or if that's how it came. Anyway, it doesn't matter. 12 by 6. So it's cardstock, uh, bright, vibrant colors, and I can see using this. She charged me a buck. I don't believe I would have paid more than that, to be honest. Um, this, These two books... I bought simply because of their covers and their spines. Now, these are books that are, okay, it says Heritage, Library Heritage Collection. So it seems to me that what they've done is they've taken, you know, literary classics and reprinted, rebound them. And I know a lot of people buy these sorts of books, these series of books, just for decor pieces. Do you remember when that was, and I don't, I don't know, I have stopped watching HGTV since we did our, our addition, our renovation. Um, but I know that there was a phase in home decor where people were, you know, organizing their bookcases by book, the color of the book covers. Um, and I thought, hmm, I mean, I suppose personal choice or whatever. I always alphabetized my books by author and I separated fiction from nonfiction, tried to keep it in those sorts of categories. Anyway, um, so I think you'll, you'll often see pictures of bookcases that are, you know, got books like this in them. Now, as I was opening and closing, opening and closing, I do love the end papers. They are in mint condition because I'm sure nobody ever opened them <laughs> or add or read them. Um, but I did notice that this is already cracking. So as much as publishers went to a great deal of trouble to do these things, sometimes the workmanship or the quality of the materials they used is not the greatest. So this is inviting um, a little redo or real remake by moi. This one, I think I touched this the last time I was there. But, um, and if you saw my What's in My Bookcase series early on, I did a miscellaneous, not miscellaneous, a sort of a animal, categories of animals and, and um, thing. And I did have some, some uh, fish books. Now this too is the corners are, you know, virtually perfect. Pretty color. You can tell by the... Uh, by the cover or the dust jacket design that this is old. I couldn't find a date at all. Look at that autograph by the author. Couldn't find a date in here. Oh, you know what? It's under there. It's under this sticker. This must have been a book that was done for the provincial government because Queen's Printer is sort of the, the official... I don't know, that does all the provinces printing for it. So it says 1970 under that label. Oh, <laughs> look at these guys. Anyway, I, you know, it's got some maps. The pages are somewhat glossy, black and white photos, more maps, um, some color photos, these sorts of illustrations. Uh, anatomical kind of il uh, illustrations, that sort of thing. But then when I flipped in the other direction, I saw something a wee bit more exciting in the back. Sport fishing in Alberta. 
sport fish in Alberta. So these are fussy cut worthy. Ah, oh, when it's backside, when it's back to back like that. Apparently not fussy cut, but hinged book pages. Oh, I can, it's got a sewn signature. I can take them apart and use these as signature pages because they are lovely. Um, each of those books cost a dollar. I was in another uh, store and, you know, sometimes you just, you gravitate to the, to the brand K and Company. Uh, the price is attractive. I mean, this is a god awful uh, cover on this, so this would come off. But um, I don't. To be honest, I just grabbed it without really doing a lot of studying. It's got okay. The premise: it's okay to just smash it in. There's always room, just like the junk drawer. Nothing's right. Nothing's wrong. It's all yours. We say glue in the gladness. So basically what they're trying to encourage people to do here is, and it's a coil bound book. The pages are, most of them are heavier. Okay. That was just the introductory one. Um, so probably geared to young people, but hey, young at heart counts too. So different sort of background papers and basically it's encouraging a person to glue stuff in um, now whether or not I use it in that way I guess remains to be seen um, it seems like why not that would be a good idea the background is already there now what is this um, oh apparently this is glue so a glue pen so we will, um, we'll see where I go with this, but really let's take this off. I hate it. Ugh. Oh, and here's a nice big pocket. I wonder if this glue actually works. Oh, that's a, there's glue at this end. Oh, that looks, that doesn't look promising. <laughs> yeah, no, that's all dried up. Luckily, I have glue. And then this is just a really fine tip black pen. So we'll leave it intact for now. If I can get it back in, that is. So, yeah, good bye. Uh, garbage. Okay, these books were a dollar each. And, you know, I've got scrapbooking books, as I've said before. I missed the boat. But as I flipped through some of these, it looked like there were some ideas that I could adapt also known as steel. So that's one, organizing your scrapbook supplies. Again, I am a sucker. I need to organize my organizing books. <laughs> I think that because I also like to, where's the date here, 2008. I think because I also like to save a buck and reuse what I have, I tend not to have things that look like this because I buy and I'm gravitated to things that are tactile, that are colors that I like, that are materials that I like. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. Maybe, you know, maybe I'm aspiring for something that I will never have. I don't know. And this is a magazine called Modern Patchwork. I had a, I flirted with quilting at one time in my, as a young wife, didn't really get too far with it. This is obviously a pullout pattern here that 
could be used, that paper could be used, as well as some of the graphic type things for collage. I thought there were some nice, you know, some bigger, bigger pages as well that would be, again, glue book type material. <clears throat> How old is this? Winter of 2016. Uh, this one is a hardcover. It's kind of square, 10 and 3 quarters by... Pretty well square. Practical Guide to Viewing the Universe. Now, this is not the first book I have on sort of astronomy and the night sky. And it, um, it seems to me that I have to do something with it. I live in a part of the world that has Aurora Borealis, which is Northern Lights. And um, so these, these things are real. I remember <clears throat> years ago when my mom was cooking for some American, okay, there was a, a guy that, a local guy that was a guide for American hunters who would come up during <clears throat> fall to hunt for deer and moose and things like that. Anyway, they needed breakfasts, bag lunches, and, well, what I would call supper, but you probably call dinner. Somewhere along the way that, that changed. Anyway, so these guys, uh, and of course my mom invited my husband and I to go there one evening and, and meet these guys and eat with them and so on. And they were, they were obviously men of means because it costs to do things like that. And so one was a doctor, I think, from Georgia or whatever. Anyway, as we were all, you know, breaking up for the, for the evening and going home, there was a Northern Lights display and these guys could not believe the splendor of it all. So if you ever have the chance to, to see Northern Lights, it, it is uh, almost beyond description. Okay, this was from yet another place that I stopped into. And basically uh, what I got from him was these uh, old 63 and 65, 66 magazines, Better Homes and Gardens. Again, don't really, I don't believe I overpaid for them. And we just know that there's a lot of imagery in here and ads in here that are kind of appealing. Okay, that's a water conditioner. I don't know about you, but every time I... We don't have a water conditioner, but, but go along with me here. Uh, I believe that I should be wearing pantyhose, pumps, and a dress if I'm going to be touching my water conditioner. So, same thing here if I'm wanting to show you my masonite paneling. Um, we've come a long way, baby. Let's, let's just say that. And this one, of course, is needlework and crafts. So there will be even more interesting ads in here. And maybe one of these days, I just have to devote a, a, one of the videos to, to working with these sorts of ads. I know that I did, um, a video a while, well, months ago about harvesting, things out of vintage magazines and it seemed to get a lot of attention so oh seed pictures what were they out of macaroni anyway so there are those two and at the same place now i already um took this apart so you'll have to trust my description here these two textiles can you see them 12 inches tall, 8 inches wide at the widest point. These two things were, this one, I obviously dried a little flatter than this one. They were glued down to some um, press board um, ovals that had a brass, plastic 
brass frame around them. Well, I was able to, oh, here's the little velvet hanger that uh, that came off there. Anyway, so these were wall hangings and they were fine. But of course, the thing that grabbed me was, <coughs> excuse me, was the possibilities of these textiles. It's a pretty open weave, as you can see. I haven't ironed them, but I will, and we'll figure out what to do next. And now I suppose if I use them that way, you know, obviously they are then on their side. So I don't know what I'm going to do, you know, cut it into, um, cut it into smaller pieces and let them be part, square them off and let them be um, fabric fl flips or something to that effect. Um, I should maybe move some of this out of the way so you can see a little better. Okay, I also bought um, these two, is it two? No, it is four placemats for two bucks. And um, the reason I'm actually doing this video is I wanted to do a few loads of laundry. So I typically, you know, throw these sorts of purchases in the laundry. Uh, sunflowers are a popular flower. They are part of, um, they're significant to Ukrainians. Um, you know, it's sort of the, the sunflower, I mean the flower of Ukraine, uh, unofficially, I believe. And we know they're very easy to grow and birds love them and so on. I like buying these kinds of things because they're soft, because they're already quilted, because they're already finished. Now, of course, if I cut this down to a more journal-like size, what I would probably, I don't know, what can you see here? If This is very rough because my ruler is at an angle. But, okay, so if I decide to cut it off there and there, and nine inches tall, there will be, you know, uh, a bit of waste, which of course, as you know, would not be wasted, but it would take care of the piping, um, you know, problem, so to speak. I've also done covers where I will turn something up. Okay, let's see, how tall is this now? Okay, this is nine inches. So theoretically, this could be a journal cover. Now it is kind of weird that way. Would it work to turn this back? Now, of course, we, we have to kind of... Nine by six, so that's kind of where that ends. Yeah, it, it almost seems as though the piping has to be sacrificed no matter what, just to, to make life a little easier. But again, limited by one's imagination. Um, another thing that I bought there, and I didn't open it yet, because goodness knows I don't have, did you see how I almost cut myself? I do not have enough wallpaper borders. I just have like dozens. I did a wallpaper video as well uh, and showed you my stash and, and the different sizes and how I use them. Oh, that's kind of good. Could save this label. Um, typically they or maybe that's just on started rolls. They will tape the, for those people who love pansies, that's kind of cool. Oops. A lot of times they will tape um, the roll closed, you know, to contain it. And then you end up with some gooey residue, but this was good. So of course, something like this could also be used Oh, see? Smart. March 1999. If 
If I was a betting woman, I would say that is their code for the date. So it's, it's kind of getting up there in age. Oh, and I also bought this, and I didn't. Of course, it was sealed. You can tell how old that is because most envelopes now have that resealable flappy thing that is so annoying but has a place in this world because then you can peek into bags this um i told you in a, another video that i think this is a fairly affordable way to oh my god it stinks uh, yeah, I'm sensitive to kind of these off-gas type smells. Oh, that's what it is. Okay, it's supposed to be a photo magnet, like for your fridge or whatever. Oh, that stinks. So that can be used. Why am I trying to destroy this? I wonder if this side is magnetic. What have I got to try here? Oh, the smell, guys. I mean, that is the magnet side. This is covered, so... I don't know. I will putz around with this and find out if I can adapt it to uh, die, uh, cut, die cut, like... You know, the dies that we use for cutting paper. If I can adapt that to my um, El Cheapo system of organizing dies. I guess if I can't, I could use these pouches as a way. I don't know. Anyway, got to think about that. Okay, I'm almost done. If you... Uh, buy something at this place then they let you pick a few items from their free section and their free section is of course <clears throat> a collection and there's a lot of clothing there but that's not my not my thing their free items are items that I guess they've had too long and regardless of how low they're priced they're not being grabbed up so here's some sizal twine, so that's always a good thing. Here's some paper twist ribbon. Um, you will remember, I'm sure, when paper twist was the thing. And I have a lot of it, and I like it because, well, it's flat. It has the potential to be opened up like so if you wanted it even thinner it um, you know back in the day it came in natural color or these sort of dyed ones oh if you guys knew how stinky this this thing is i have to say another disappointing thing um and quite often you can't tell in the thick of the purchase, especially if it's like an outdoor thing like a garage sale or a flea market, is things that have been stored in smokers' homes. And I, you know, I don't intend, I'm not trying to diss anybody. Um, smoking is an addiction. And the, you know, the deck is stock, stacked against anybody who's trying to quit. But I'll tell you, for non-smokers who bring these things home, um, it is a process and a half to try to get rid of that smell. I know that when I was at a stamp show a few months ago, a couple months ago, I got a lot of freebies and I made some purchases and I, it's, you know, it's six, eight weeks later, I'm still trying to air that stuff out. Now, of course, once the weather becomes a little more 
favorable outside, I will put some things outside. But, you know, there's danger in that too with paper that if it's at all breezy, which is kind of what you want, you want a fresh, <laughs> fresh country air, um, you know, pages can and have gotten torn. Anyway, this was a freebie, uh, intact roll, and it is this sheer orangey ribbon. And maybe the final and most delectable visually thing that I grabbed out of the free area. It had a $2 price tag on it. I didn't know what it was going to be. Cute little, these kind of little hinges. Flocked. El Perfecto condition. I guess it held a carving set, you know. Uh, probably a knife and fork, padded cover. Like, it's it's gorgeous. I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but it is definitely gorgeous. You know, it could almost, if a person had some, you know, it, it warrants being in a jewelry box, uh, being used as a jewelry box. Um... I, I don't know. It's it's mint. It's lovely. And it is mine. Anyway, I will stop there. I can now throw this in the wash. I might do these as well. Although I did... Oh, by the way, I got this off that uh, press board by using a, a baking pan filling it with warm water with some dish soap added to it. And it did not take very long at all. I then rinsed uh, it out under clear water, clear running water, to get any glue residue off it. Now, I fear that because it's already starting to fray, although I suppose I could do a, a stitch around it to stop the fraying, um, if... Or I could put it in a lingerie bag, too. And maybe that's simpler. I'll put these two in, in a lingerie bag. And that way, they will be thoroughly cleaned. And they won't just... It won't end up being threads in my lint trap. <laughs> anyway, okay, guys. I'm going to stop here. I can now deal with this stuff. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye-bye.